want a skitchin bitch bring your cables or your lace come join us for a pack a face hello welcome it's to a day. pack a face it's a monday it is a monday i'm gonna sit here and futz with my little shawl that i made as one does but it's so pretty thank you with the cables and the lace and the things it's a hohi locatelli love her stuff and Madeline Tosh, two of my favorite things. Love their stuff. Yeah. Yes. Put good my glasses combination. on so I can see ourselves. Ah, yes. Um, yeah, so I went on a trip and I cast it on on the airplane and it took me less than a week. Yay. And I made it and it was shaped really weird and then I had to like block it super hard because it's a little like the point is there mm -hmm. and it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be flat and then mm. it's supposed to go that way. So. Interesting. Yeah. But it's fun. It turned out really cute. Thank you. Yes. It's soft. I am wearing all hand knits today. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I yes. had to grab hand knits because I just, it's summer still. Yes, it is definitely summer. My top is a little too warm. It's made out of merino and silk. And boy, is merino toasty. <laughs> yeah. But this is the violet top. And if my dog wasn't on my lap, I would stand up and show you the lovely lace work around the, the edge. But also yeah. Titus demands. I was going to say, Titus, do you want to come sit in the middle? <laughs> come sit in the middle, buddy. He's a very good boy, but boy, is he clean. Come sit down. <laughs> and what are you working on? I am working on the Seaside Scallop Dress by Nittitude. And I might actually show this as an example of the uh, demo technique, but this lovely little scalloped collar yeah, that's here so cute. is so cute. And I'm going to do it on the hemline too, even though the pattern says ribbing, um, but I'm going to do it on the hem too. But this is a crocheted technique. And so oh, I got to awesome. practice my crochet and it was a good time. And yeah, I've got like a good chunk of it done. The whole body is finished. I added yeah. some elastic into the waistband. To it's keep it so cute. You know, nice and tough since it's kind of a heavy fabric. You know, yeah. So it'll eventually like and pull down. Um, that wool or cotton? Or it is cotton and nylon. Oh, beautiful. Mostly cotton. 96% cotton, 4% nylon. Or maybe it's 94% cotton and that's 6% nylon. I never remember. Um, do I have it here? Yes, I do. Yes, I sure do. Do, do, do. 94% cotton, 6% nylon. And then it's going to, on the skirt, very edging of the skirt, I am going to use this lovely little gradient. Oh, beautiful. And gradient it out through the bottom. So Yeah, that'll be really, really fun. Really excited about it. And I am very excited for it to be done. Um, but yeah, I finished my violet tee, which was kind of a make-along with some of my other knitter friends. And it's got this lovely little like lacy pattern here. So and then cute. I am wearing my very cute wrap skirt that again you can't really see too super yeah. well but and the violet is um, Jana Kate, so the one that had a weird construction right yeah this is the one that had like that like hexagonal start and then you like brought out the sleeves and then brought and joined the front so kind of a weird weird way to make a sweater hybridly but it was really fun and it came together really quickly considering it's I used fingering weight. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> um, say the stitches are tiny. Yeah, it only it only took like a couple of weeks, I think. So it didn't take very long. Cute. Yeah. I love it. So it being the last two weeks of summer. Mm hmm And you go back next week? Two weeks. So I go back on the twenty eighth. Okay. So that all being said, how many things have you finished this summer? been keeping track no you haven't no i really haven't been keeping and i figured track. i'd put you on the spot um, and not ask you ahead here. of time <laughs> i finished my four projects for make it so i did my yoga socks i did a headband i did a like a shawl a one skein shawl and um my top my tank top i did this violet tee i did a test knit um my peplum or plenaloon top from Alicia Plummer, mm, and now I'm like so gonna have to go through all of my photos to see if I, what else I did here. Um, oh, but, my wildflowers blouse. Oh yeah, that I finished one was super that. Cute. I almost wore it today, but I wore it yesterday, and I might have gotten some soup dumpling on it, so uh, that will need washed. And yeah, I think is that it. No, I made a couple of crocheted coffee cozies as well. Okay. Because I taught myself how to crochet. Yeah, um, those were really cute. And I'm nearly done with my second test knit too. I am finishing this one up. I'm so mad at myself 
This is my kombu or kombu, I don't know how she pronounces it, by J. Myo Knits, Myo Knits, M I Y O. Um, and I'm testing this for her, and the cables are gorgeous. Yeah, they're like, so cute. The they remind me of DNA. Are so pretty, and the uh, ribbing on the sleeves will have that same thing. Um, but I'm so mad at myself because in the test knit pattern, it doesn't say to switch back to your size sixes when you pick up for the sleeves, which oh, yeah. any normal person would know like your sleeves are going to be the same as your body, but it didn't outright say it. And so I went directly from the ribbing <laughs> to the sleeves and did not change my needle size. So I had to rip back 83 rows in oh my, my almost finished sleeve and I have to start terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so terrible terrible upsetting but you know there are and show us things. your new trunk oh yes and that's why i brought that project not because i was planning on working on it it's so it's cute cabling. but i got the delicue train case and oh my gosh i got it from fiber fever that's a local shop in milwaukee um down in the bayview area and i think they only had one of this color left and it is so cute and like sage sagey minty green is my jam so mm -hmm. I immediately had to get it, and it's got um, a strap that you can carry, like a shoulder carry too, if you hook it into these little like rivet thingies, um, which is great. But the and funnest then, part is your yarn hangs out the side. Uh, yep, it's got a it's got a couple of yarn holes that you can use, and it came with these little magnets, so you can like stick your notions yeah, to the top. Awesome. It's, it's magnetic, and then there's this little like tray that you can pull out, and you can stuff your yarn and your project in the bottom and it's awesome and I love it and it's one of my very very favorite new things yeah that's so fun because one of the things I kind of wanted to talk about is bags in general because like seriously we have so many there's so many options in each project <laughs> like yes. kind of calls for its own thing mm -hmm. and then I pile everything up in big bags Yes. I always feel bad because, like, I feel like I neglect some of my bags, my project bags that, like, I bought earlier on when I was just getting into yeah. project bags um, or ones that just, like, aren't as convenient. Like, I love a project bag with pockets. And yes. I love, like, the Fat Squirrel bags are great and they're super mm -hmm. cute, but they don't have any pockets. It's just, like, a pouch with a zipper. Yeah. Um, and I do love them because, like, you can carry them along. They're great for lighter projects. Um, yeah. I use my Black Pearl Magic bags that mm -hmm. way. And I keep a project in the Black Pearl Magic bag because mm -hmm. then it's water resistant. Yep, that's what I've yeah. got today. I've got my Yarnicorn bag from Black Pearl Magic. And you can put stuff in it and then put that into a different bag. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, it's like I kind of need a separate bag maybe for Notions or whatever. Yep. Yep. But so you've got bags within bags within bags. Always. <laughs> but I also do photography, so my photography bag then becomes my primary bag because right. it's heavier. Yeah, that makes but sense. It's yeah, like, true. but then I've got like these. I right? love those kinds of tote bags, those well, chunky ones. Right. And that's you kind know, of what so mine, it's got my nothing... typical purse is too, is one of those big right. totes. And so that's nice because then your yarn can just swoop out without tugging on a zipper. Mm-hmm. I also love a good backpack, so I've been carrying this one, and it's got too many things, and so then the top's always flopped open, and my little tiny yarn gets stuck in the zippers. Right. I struggle with that, too. Crazy. But it's nice because my pattern, I can stick in the um, computer pocket, mm -hmm. and then it stays flat. Yes. <sighs> or if I actually use my tablet, which, you know, it's summer. I haven't been using it. I use my tablet all the time. Yeah. I just, I'm a mess. Like, I, but I like Knit Companion because, like, I can write myself notes and things in there. Right. But um, the thing is, is, like, I haven't, I haven't had my laptop open in a month. Yeah. And I don't keep everything charged. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, I always say I'm going to be more organized and then I don't. Yeah, fair. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, it's allowed. I'm totally stressing because I've got two weeks until Aiden goes back to school. Only one kid goes back to school. Uh, uh. So she's going to go back, but she hasn't done any of her summer reading. She hasn't unpacked from camp. She is going to want to shop and get her hair done. And mm -hmm. she has appointments all week for dentist and hair and... School photo. School photo and... It's weird they do that before school. I like that, though. Like, I think yeah, that's a great way to do our things. Our school district started doing that because then they make their student IDs. Mm-hmm. 
That's a really good idea. Because I hate that like, picture day is always like the first or second week of school. And it's yeah. such a stressful experience, especially for the music teacher, because they book it on a day that works best for the school. And yes. when you're the music teacher who works at two schools, a lot of times the photographer is not there the same day that you're there. Right. And so I think my picture is three years old at this point from the school yearbook. Yeah. <laughs> well, and they have, they have a retake in September. Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. My other kiddo who graduated is very, like, he had the same picture for all four years because he just didn't care. Yes. That's fair. All right. I see nothing wrong with this. Did I slide that one? Yes. Oh, you brought a thinky piece to work on. Not really. (laughs) But it's kind of funny because I just don't see the pattern because Mm -hmm. it's in boucle. Right. Um, But we can talk about it. It's so pretty. So when I went to Montreal... I bought myself one skein of Julie Assel and Boucle in this fabulous Muppety purple. Look at this. It is very. Ooh, it's yeah, Muppety is the best word for that. Yeah. It's called Lupin, you know, so like the flowers probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just like a shade lighter than the dark purple that I really like. And so I bought one skein. And a little late the party but Katie Jack's Knits is doing a three day weekender knit along. So you're actually making the weekender in a weekend. Well no. (laughs) Um, And their intention wasn't to do it in a weekend either. Their intention they started July 3rd Mm -hmm. so the 4th of July three day weekend Mm -hmm. and going through Labor Day Mm -hmm. so that three day weekend. Oh okay. And so their idea was Make the Weekender with modifications. Okay. I paused because the word modifications just disappeared out of my head. Um, So they are using um, a lot of the Big Birdie yarn from Mm -hmm. Wyoming Kid. Mm -hmm. They're using different textures. They're doing color blocking. Um, They made theirs both, I think, size small um, at a bigger gauge so that it fit them as like a size medium. Okay. I'm not a size medium. So, um, I just did the math and am hopefully making the correct size. But it's funny because with this boucle, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm even going to see the, the seam up the middle. Because like that's the the cutie part. Mm-hmm. Um, right. It's going to kind of blend in because it's right. foofy. Right. So it's like... If you look here, you can't even really see it. Yeah. I think that's okay, though. Oh, I'm happy with it. It's so soft and fuzzy. And then it hasn't come yet. I think it's coming tomorrow. I ordered Big Birdie in black. So, like... I probably did not save the photo. Never mind. That's fine. Um, so, so, like Jackie's knit that she did. She did her second one, I think in off-white mm-hmm. bulkier yarn and then she did black for the color blocking and mm-hmm. a turtleneck oh nice and it's got black on the sleeves mm-hmm. so i really liked the look of that and i thought well i've got this boucle so i ordered more boucle and mm-hmm. i ordered some black um big birdie to do the the Turtle shoulder walk. seam mm-hmm. and the turtleneck yeah and that comes tomorrow and right now it's just literally knitting in the round for like 15 inches. Yep, that's what I'm doing too. <laughs> um, so I feel like if my kids cooperate, I should be able to get quite a bit done and be to the split and at least start it. Mm-hmm. I might be able to have it done before Labor Day weekend. We'll yeah, see. That's awesome. We'll see. But it's fun and it's fuzzy and it's a yarn that I liked that I didn't really have a plan for. Mm-hmm. So, instead of making more summer knits, like I was intending, I am doing a knit along. That's fair. That was totally unintended. Yes. And it's funny because I was just at Lamb and Kid mm-hmm. and looking at the Big Birdie and didn't have any plan for it and didn't buy any. And now you do. And came home after saying, I don't need to buy any more yarn for a long time and ordered more yarn. Well, that's because you bought a lot of yarn. I bought a lot of yarn. Um, did you tell everyone where you were? I did not. So 
one of the things that Laura and I talked about talking about with you guys today is fiber travel. Um, there are fiber festivals everywhere. Mm -hmm. There are knitting retreats all over the place. And of course, local yarn shops in literally every corner of everywhere. Right. <laughs> so it's just become kind of this thing where it's like, oh, we went to Chicago and we stopped at this store. We haven't been to that store yet or whatever. I have my purchases from Wool Co. to show off from Chicago. So. Right. <laughs> Wool Co. is so amazing. Oh my God. If, if you guys are anywhere near Evanston? Elgin. Elgin, yes. They all start with these. Yes. <laughs> um, but Elgin, Illinois, which is a couple hours outside of Chicago, right? I think it's like 45 minutes, an hour or so. It's not quite okay. two hours outside of Chicago. Um, amazing. Also, it's they enormous. have everything and they tell you how much they have online. So mm -hmm. totally look online and see um, if you're looking for something specific. That's where you got your giant box of Tweety Noir. Yeah. <laughs> first weekend I met Lauren, I was like, it's telling me it'll send me 30 skeins. And it did. What could happen? <laughs> Surprisingly, they sent her 30 skeins of yarn. Yeah. So I've got 30 skeins of Tweety Noir that I still haven't knit. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I started and my gauge was not what it should have been. Yeah. So it's okay. I put it away to do summer knits. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I went on a knitting retreat the Indie Untangled Mount Rainier Retreat. They're first off. Um, can we pause this? Because it's my sister. Hold on. All right. Sorry about that. It was my sister. Um, so Indie Untangled, their first off retreat. It was a reschedule from pre-COVID. Uh, yeah, it was lovely. We went to Mount Rainier. And she scheduled it in conjunction with the one-off first year Flock Fiber Festival, which was lovely. We went on Sunday, so we missed most of the hoopla mm -hmm. um, because anybody who was anybody was stopping by there and signing books and stuff. Yep. But they were mostly there, I think, on Saturday. I think Saturday was the biggest, busiest day. Makes Friday, sense. they did a mask only. I love that. That's yeah. incredibly thoughtful. Yeah, but it still was, like, crazy. Oh, I'm on sure. On Saturday, like, before they opened on Saturday, there was a line, like, around the block. Mm, I believe that. I believe um, it. Yeah, it looked, Sunday, I looked at some pictures. And yeah, and Sunday when we went, happened. it wasn't that crazy. Good. And it was lovely. Like, we... I had some lovely conversations and met people that, um, you know, we've been friends with online, whatever. People we follow on Instagram. Yeah. So it was very funny because Emily from Fangirl Fibers was on my list to stop by her booth. And it was the first booth kind of like as you entered. And ooh, where did I throw it? I was so excited because she came out with this. <gasps> ah, I love ah, her stuff. Ah. Oh my gosh. So that's this so is fun. this is her haunted mansion doodle ah, kit. Oh, that's perfect. And the colors, like the purple and the uh -huh. and it's DK weight. And I needed fingering weight minis for the class that was gonna happen at the retreat. And I ordered that and it's gonna come to my house when it gets there. But I also kind of just love it. And so I got the doodle kit. And I it's need got, the doodle kit from her. He's the hitchhiking ghost, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. It's cute. I don't know if you can see that. Cute, cute. Probably not. I'm not I familiar with see. Haunted Mansion, but I do love the, like the, what's the word? The cover art on the, because it's so, it's, mm -hmm. it's like deep and dark and saturated, but also like the coloring is lovely. Right. We went on the ride last year when we went to Disney and my kids got stuck. Mm-hmm. Like the ride stop, oh, and so geez. they were right by, by by one of the ghosts, and they're like, "Oh my god, it was so annoying." <laughs> so it amuses me even more, because yeah, they yes. were being horrible. <laughs> um, but here is the little project that I made on the retreat. Very I don't know cute. If you can see that the yeah. coloring is color work cozy, and it's um, color work, but also marling. Mm -hmm. So you hold the two colors together. Yes. 
and then it gives you kind of the speckled variable look um so this one it was designed by Lindsay Fowler of Larkspur Knits and um, we got this cozy or this cowl pattern as well with the yarn um, that was designed to go with Mount Rainier so it's like pretty pink and purple and red and it was it was cute because she's like these colors are totally out of my wheelhouse because <laughs> she does a lot of naturals mm -hmm. um, and she was lovely she's the one who wrote the Salt, Salt timber? timber, yes. Yeah. And so she talked all about her experience with designing the book and getting it published. And and she's kind of a baby knitter, too. You said she's been yeah, she like said five she's years? Seven. Seven years, okay. Um, and she was lovely, and her mother was with, and Lisa of Indie Untangled. Mm -hmm. uh, she was with us, and her mother was there. And they all kind of hung out, mm -hmm. like... And knit with us and like yeah, it was I very communal which was nice yeah I just think it's incredibly impressive to have only been knitting for seven years and already have an entire pattern book established oh she I just think that's really really phenomenal yeah she was she talked all about like how she kind of started and designed it and it was fascinating um and of course everybody who was at the retreat was lovely mm -hmm. I miss all of them there's a few that I'm still like you know how it is when, like, you follow someone on Instagram, but then you have a really hard time, like, connecting the faces with the names, mm -hmm. and then you meet them, and then you try to go back to, like, remind yourself who everybody is on Yes. Your, oh, my God. Yes. Um, so, working on that. But, Fangirl Fibers is kind of local to us. Yeah. She's, she's pretty nearby. And so, she had met our friend and talked to her about you know, things that she wants to be doing. And so hopefully we will connect with her soon mm -hmm. and go and discuss all the things. But when I got there, so I was talking to her about this colorway um, in particular, and I was looking at her stitch markers and we were fangirling about being fangirls. And their booth was shared with the... Who did we say these people are? Uh, Pacific the, Knit Co. Oh, yeah. Pacific Knit Co. So the Doodle Decks. And um, these are really big right now. I, yeah, like I, I can't see showed anything. showed off mine okay. from last time. So I bought the Seattle Deck. And I'm also have the Fall Deck that you have. Yes. Um, but when I went over, so we were talking about they have Sasquatch yes. in the Seattle Deck. And... We were totally geeking out about cryptids, cryptids, and telling. I made a note. Jamie. Jamie Lorax said that she can do the charting, and Emily was going to work on the knitting. Look at this shit. Oh my so god. So good. So. Like, we were just geeking out and, like, talking to her and, like, yeah, we need a whole cryptid deck. We need a deck. whole deck of cryptids. We Mothman. Need, yeah, Man. Mothman is the one Emily was like, I love Mothman! Jersey Devil. So, hopefully, that actually happens for Halloween and we'll have, like, um, Frankenstein's Monster and Dracula and Mothman and all the things. And, yes. Yeah. And I love and it. And Doodle Deck. I am 100% down to test knit for Jamie if she needs test knitters. So. Right? So we have to message her and tell her that. Yes. And they had also their uh, pattern for cup cozies using the doodle deck. And so basically you do two repeats mm -hmm. of the pattern. That makes sense. And then it makes like a cute little cozy. coffee cozy. I was thinking I could do like some fingerless mittens or something. With yeah, the yeah, doodle yeah. Deck. I think that'd be really cute. Yeah, and the fall one, I want to make some fingerless mitts for sage, mm -hmm. and I want to do, instead of color work knitting, I want to do just like one repeat, but I want to do it as, what's it called when you knit over the top? Or duplicate stitch. Duplicate stitch. Um, so I want to do that and put mushrooms on it. Fun. Um, because that will save me from having to carry the yarn mm -hmm. all the way around. Mm -hmm. I've also substituted... Um, 
like you can do a, a ribbed pattern on top in mm-hmm. the same color. So if you want to like keep it monochromatic, then you yeah. can do the ribbing in the contrast color instead. Oh, cute. Or yeah. not ribbing, but um, purling in the, yeah. in the contrast color. Yeah, fun. Yeah. So, yeah, so those are some of the things that I was like super geeked about um, meeting them and doing that. And then it, <laughs> we had gone to Lamb and Kid actually first. And I spent really a lot of money. Don't drink in yarn shop, kids. No, totally drink in yarn shop. It's way more fun. <laughs> um, but I went and they have a pattern called Upstate of Mind. I always forget, so I brought the paper. It is called Upstate of Mind Shawl. And this isn't the best picture, but we also met Sarah and she made us drink. Um, it was fun. And so I bought... It's so pretty. Diamond Lane Worsted Weight Cashmere. So pretty. In all of their colors. So, I keep going the wrong way. I don't know. Oh, I think the shade is closed. I'm like, why is our lighting so terrible today? Um, But I should open the shade. Or I can. But it's a big, it's a big cozy (laughs) shawl. She's wearing it in the picture, like, scrunched up. But... It also like hangs really nice because it's got a big panel of like zigzag in the middle. That's a little better. Can you see it better now? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's seven colors and it came out to 10 skeins and it'll have little stripes of bright color, which I think will be really fun. I love that. So instead of making myself a cashmere sweater, I'm going to make myself a cashmere shawl. I love that. I resisted the urge at Wool & Co. to buy all of the the Rowan uh, 100% cashmere. Ooh, yes. Because it was $65 a skein. (laughs) Yeah, that's a lot. How many yards on that? Holy bananas. Not as many as I would have liked for $65 a skein. Yeah, because this this wasn't that much. I think they're around 30-ish. Is it 100% It's 100% cashmere. 50 grams, 100 yards. Might have been... I don't think it was 40. I think it was like 35. Okay. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's so soft. Because it's worsted weight, it's just going to be like the coziest. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because it's the middle of summer still. Mm-hmm. I was very much, before I left, like I am not prepared for winter knits. I want to finish some summer knits. How many summer knits did you finish this summer, Jenna? Um, at least two. I was going to say, you did your tank top. Your did, tank tops. Two of them. I did two tank tops and a... Did I do a t-shirt? Maybe I didn't make it to the t-shirt. I don't think you did a t-shirt. Not that no. I remember, at least. I don't know. Maybe I don't you did. I don't remember. Maybe you did. I don't know. So, but yeah, and then I did... on the When I got back from the trip, I had bought some plump. Mm-hmm. So, I made two cowls out of plump right away when I got home. It's the spin cycle plump, if anyone is unfamiliar. It's so pretty. It's very um, fun. So I did that, and yeah, I'm like, and then I started this thing, which is not a summer knit. So I guess I'm over it and yeah. ready for some pumpkin spice. Yes, I feel like this is going to be like a three seasons kind of knit. I feel yeah. like well, with cotton, it's going to be light enough that I can do right. in the spring and the fall and probably the winter because it does have like three-quarter sleeves. Oh, yeah, so, cute. Um, yeah, I think that'll be fine. And it's going to be kind of my three-season dress so I can keep it in my closet damn near all year. Did you find them? Titus, you were the worst. Titus found my Cheetos. Ah, that's what he was smelling. I wondered why his face was in your bag so much. Okay. But it's also the bag is closed. Yeah, like it's not an that, open bag. That of doesn't Cheetos. matter. It's <laughs> so gonna get in there. All right, he's he's a very smart boy. So Too smart. I also started the fungus sweater. Yes. Which I'm making out of fua fua. Oh my gosh! Speaking of fuzzy Strong yumminess, strongly recommend if you can afford like, it because it is a pricey yarn, but oh my god, it's beautiful. And everything, so soft. and she is so nice. So my friend Kirsten ordered the yarn from her. And I went to Flock, and she knew exactly who Kirsten, Kirsten was, mm-hmm. and was like, oh, yes, tell her I'll have black in fall. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is 
kind of this gray green why why can't I ever figure this out and it's got a moss <laughs> stitch pattern um and it where is it translated from it's translated from like Danish, Danish. or yeah mm -hmm. or Norwegian or whatever they have um, to speak there um but mm. it's it's a tough translation into English so for a basic kind of square it's um Rika Bansgard from Refined Knitwear. Um, and her patterns are beautiful. So not a lot of shaping or anything, but the way she starts the neck and describes it, I was like, yeah, it was little, making my brain hurt a little bit. A little tricky. So I just had, I wrote out notes for myself. Again, I don't know if you can see this because I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, I can see. Okay. But um, you can't see like exactly so, what's written. But right. It's fine. So I just wrote it out so that I've got like a cheat sheet instead of going back and forth on the pattern pages. And then I started this other thing. So hopefully I remember what I'm doing when I get back to it. Yes. So many things, Lauren. Too many things. So funny. And I also wanted to show off. So I went on an Etsy looking for yarn balls. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh my gosh. So this yarn bowl is 3D printed. It's so cute. It looks like a cauldron. And I'd tell you who I ordered it from, but I don't remember. But isn't that so fun? That's adorable. It makes me happy. Very much your vibe. So I've got adorable. like, you know, my winter trees, my black cup, my black yarn bowl. It is. It is it's Halloween-y season. Yeah, we're getting there. Spooky season. And then I'm going to make something out of my doodle kit. And yeah, it's going to be so fun. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> like my stuff that I have. Good. Oh my goodness. I was going to look at my notes. I'm working hard. Oh, needle things. What are these called? Stitch, Stitch savers? Stitch yeah. So I've got little coffee cup ones today and they are like rubber and they pop on your needles so that your um, needles don't fly off. And there's a couple of different ways. I have boxes. Lauren's got foxes, um, and we had some that are like spring attached that Kim got yesterday mm -hmm. yeah, like that that you bubbly. put actually like around the needle. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much fun, and there's so many options right now. Mm -hmm. I went to a geek craft art show, mm -hmm. and so it was a lot of fun 3D printed stuff and stuff, and someone had... Like, just a bowl full of these, not matched, because they're beads, mm -hmm. and you can make pens, mm -hmm. and the pen has, like, a wire, and so you pick your beads and design it yourself. Fun! So did you know you can go on Amazon and just order these? Yeah, it's a new, a new thing. I didn't realize. I didn't either. You can't get, like, the cute matchy ones, so, like, it's still... Worth and, it. And I couldn't find, like... I don't know where they're getting the really good ones, mm -hmm. um, but they had like some basic coffee cups, sheep, goats, mm -hmm. llamas, like some of the more common ones that you see, mm -hmm. horror theme ones. Fun. Um, most of them come in packs of like 10 or 20. Okay. And so you get like an assortment, mm -hmm. which, you know, I don't need 20 no. sheep, but no. <laughs> just a thought. Yeah, that's I was a great very surprised. Idea. I also would not have connected that these are like beads because they don't seem like yeah. beads. Like, so, but I guess, yeah, you could thread them onto a thing and yeah. So I that ordered would be a little, like earring or <laughs> yeah, I ordered a few because I thought they'd be cute for like holiday gifts for my knitters. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so it's like I'll make like matching pairs or whatever and try mm -hmm. to match them with personalities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So don't be surprised okay. <laughs> or pretend to be surprised, <laughs> right? Like, Oh, okay, Jenna. Yeah, mm hmm I know where you got these. I love that. It's a great idea. Yeah, so that's fun. And then, like, yeah, if I make some more of the coffee cozies, would be cute. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm going to crochet some coffee cozies because those are a really good way to build your crocheting skills. Yeah. And I just got the email today that uh, Kirsten wants to do Tunisian. Tunisian crochet. Yes, I'm very excited about that because I've been wanting to do that for a while. It looks so easy. I'm like, why haven't I learned how to do this yet? Right. So. Well, and there's a knitting or a crochet pattern that I really want to make. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not a crocheter. 
and it's going to be way above my skills. But I feel like if I do it in a class or someplace where I can be like, mm -hmm. stop and help when I need help, I might be able to do it. Yes, I need that pattern again. I need to see it again. It's very pretty. Yeah, so um, I bet Lisa would help me or um, Corinne has said that she could help me with the skills needed. Love it. Um, so I have to look at my schedule and figure out if I can join the, what the do you call it? Pick, pick your, your own. Yeah, yeah, pick your project. So I could go and just knit with them every week. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I also need to go back to doing yoga or something physical. Mm -hmm. Me too. Oh, I can't yeah. do yoga anymore because my joints pop out of place too easily. Right. And that's upsetting because I used to love yoga. I think mine would really help my joints because hiking in the mountains, I, my knee hurts. Like all of my joints. Oh, I forgot to bring my Theragun. Damn it. No, I bought one. Oh, you did. Okay. I ordered one. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, so those are some of my things where I'm like, I just, I need to get back on track. Like, but I'm traveling a lot because I can. Mm -hmm. And I have my kids a lot because I can. And I don't know, just like everything that I am doing is a lot. And so finding time to balance and rebalance yeah. has to happen. Yeah. I've been not doing so much traveling, but we did like, we took a trip up to Wollon Co. Um, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I think two weeks ago. Whenever you guys were in, I yeah, think when you were in Rainier. Um, so we went to, uh, not Chicago, but Elgin which is a suburb of Chicago, and I bought too many things, but I bought things for like four projects, so, you know. Um, yeah. That's, you know, it's not bad for four different things that I'll get to wear forever. Um, that right. is the one thing about knitting, and I, I sent my husband a meme, the one that I told you about, like, yeah. I'm not a yarn hoarder, I just, I have a very carefully curated, um, yes. like, museum of personal fiber. Um, I said, I just <laughs> shop faster than I knit. Yeah, but my husband came up, I sent him that meme, and he looked at me, and he's like, you're not a yarn hoarder. You have a very reasonable amount of yarn. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. So, because I do actually use my yarn, you know, most of the oh, time. Yeah. I have some that I have not touched after I bought it, because it was like a one-off fingering weight skein. That's a lot of my, like, stash yarns, where I was like, mm -hmm. pretty, and then I've got some didn't touch too. them. Well, I've got some but. shawls that I would like to do with those, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like I've got them together where it's like these three colors kind mm -hmm. of go together mm -hmm. when I feel inspired to do that. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, the problem I, is, is I keep getting inspired by different things that I don't already have. That was my issue with like the fingering weight stuff too, is like I was on like a sock kick for a long time and like I fall into a habit of like, I'm really into X, Y, and Z and I buy a bunch of yarn for X, yeah. Y, and Z and then I'm like, oh yeah, I was going to do a thing and then oh, I like didn't my, do the thing. <laughs> my 12 other summer projects that I yeah, didn't that. touch this summer. <laughs> yes, that. So... Um, yeah, so I bought, of course, what I've been working on today for my, my dress. I got, um, this is Juniper Moon Farm Cumulus, Beautiful. which is cotton, and then this is, I think it's called, um, I don't remember, and I took the ball band off of it because I wanted to see how closely I could match the color. Um, it's, yeah. it's called, like, Degrade or something, where it's, it talks about how it, like, distorts into the different colors. Yeah. Cute. Um, All right, but we same. have to pause again. Here comes, here comes crazy. Sorry, I interrupted Lauren talking about her yarn, so no, she can there's, start over. It's a little little chaotic up in here, and that's okay. Oh, so yes. I have three kids and babysitters, and we're at the extra house where the kiddo stays, and yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they popped by for a minute, and Titus got a little zoomy and overly excited, <laughs> and so there was a lot of extra happening. Yeah, and then my other here. kid called to talk about a project I asked him to work on. Yeah, it's like, it's just, it's... A never-ending yeah. carousel of nonsense. Yeah, it is. It's fun. Yes, so it is. we might have to start doing this in my car. It's the only place I get <laughs> peace. Yes. I'd say the bathroom, but I don't get peace there either. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> not with, not with kids. Not with kids. Dogs and kids. And not with pets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the amount of time this, that Titus has decided to, like, nose his way in on me while I'm peeing is... Innumerable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Grateful I don't have children. Yeah, honey lays Ain't on, nobody need to see hun, that. Honey busts in and lays on the floor. Yep. And it's just like schlump. Yep. 
Titus looks at the bathtub because that's where he's gotten a bath before, and he's mm-hmm. like, "Is it? Is that what we're doing?" Like he just looks that's suspiciously so at me. <laughs> so. so funny. But yeah, um, so I was talking about yarn that I got at yeah. Wormco. I want to see your yeah, Wormco yarn. I'm very excited about this stuff that I had mentioned, and I hope they go together. This one's a little like bluer than this, so yeah, I think it's, it's more sea foamy. But I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Um, I think it'll make that bottom edge just pop. It's yeah. gonna be so fun. I'm super excited about it. So we'll see what happens with that. And then oh, I'm gonna knit an extra stitch here so my stitch marker doesn't fall out while I'm yeah. talking. Uh, so I'm going to make the Misfit by the Stitch and Witch. That's this cute little like X crossback, yes. and it's adorable. And I am doing it with Love some it. Malabrigo. Um, this is it's dewberry. Jenna it's dewberry. It's my color, color. Way, and it is Jenna colored. And so sorry, I'm hoping Jenna. it doesn't fit her. <laughs> so I'm very excited about it. And the, like the cross right? back, like, open back, how, it's look very how cute. cute. Those would go together. They would go mm. very well together. But yeah, that's a nice little fingering weight. Very very cute and so soft. And of course, it's a smaller brio, so you know it's going to be good. It's so pretty. Yes, we're featuring them in our newsletter next month for the Knitting Guild because they are out of Peru, I think. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's Hispanic Heritage Month in September, so we're highlighting yeah. Malabrigo Hispanic and... folk. What's the other one? Uh, Manos del Uruguay. Uruguay. Yep. So excited about that. But yeah, I was really excited to find that because it was like one of the things on my list because I needed to have a list because it was Wool & Co. and otherwise I would spend $8,000. Mm-hmm. Um, so and when... hours. Hours. Yeah, so many hours. But one of the th- this was one of the projects on my list. So I put the yardage that I needed and the kind of yarn that I needed. I was like, I need like a tonal ish and this many yards of fingering weight. So that was on my list. And then I am doing the linen staple top um, that you made um, by was that a hokey one? Hokey Locatelli? The mm. linen staple? No. No. Who is that? I don't remember. I also don't remember. To the Google machine. Right. This this is really my brain. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, I'm I made a linen something? top. Something. Who was my linen top? That made? is 100% Hohi Locatelli. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is. It was the <laughs> black one. Yes. So I got this like kind of charcoal color for that. And it's not 100% linen. It's linen and cotton. And that's, um, it looks so much thicker than mine. Yeah, it's. I'm sure it's right, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, I had Kirsten feel it, and she's like, it feels a lot like what I'm working with, and that was yours, so... Yeah, um, but this is like a braided? Yeah, it's like a chainette, I think, structure, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, it's very pretty. It's really, it's soft because it's cotton and linen. Um, I struggle with linen when I'm knitting it. It bothers oh, yeah. my hands, mm-hmm. um, so I'm, I'm kind of grateful it's not 100% linen. I initially went in trying to find 100% linen and could not find, like... Yeah. anything that worked for it so i'm excited to see kind of what this does and yeah, i like the way beautiful. it feels so that's rowan i um, used okay so i ordered the kit mm-hmm. off of last space trico is that the mm-hmm. one in montreal mm-hmm. so i ordered their kit i got four skeins of yarn i used two okay which is why kristen has the other two right um i made it a little short mm-hmm so it'll be interesting to see, because I think she made it a longer, like it's not that cropped. Right. Yeah. That's popular mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And that's probably where the difference came in. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how much you use, because I definitely made mine crop to go over my dress. Yeah. I think I'll probably make it a little bit lengthier, which is okay, because I want to wear it like under cardigans and things this oh, year. Oh, yeah. Cute. Um, that's my plan for it is, you know, that's why I've been focusing more on tops and less on sweaters, because I have a ton of sweaters now and yeah. uh, like too many sweaters. <laughs> so I'm looking for things that I can wear like under a sweater during the mm-hmm. winter. And so that's kind of what I've been focusing on. But I am going to make myself another sweater because I'm an idiot. Um, I bought the Spark cardigan during Andrea Mowry's mm-hmm. birthday sale. Mm. and I did not want to buy as much spin cycle as she recommended because I'm a big old fat girl and I can't afford like six skeins of spin cycle just for my contrast color right <laughs> so um That's cascade has this beautiful. wave um 220 superwash wave that is lovely and kind of mimics that sort of spin cycle sort of hand spun where it kind of variegates and changes the colors throughout. Yeah. So I'm going to do the contrast color of the spark in that, and I That's might do it in gorgeous. either a cream or like a charcoal for the main color. Yeah, pretty. So I think that'll be lovely. And then 
because I joined the membership of Wool & Co. Because yes. it got me 20% off of all of my yarns. Yes. Um, I got a free skein of Leading Men Fiber Arts yarn. So, like, they wound up, like, paying me $18 in the difference of what I would have paid the first time versus awesome. the freebie. Um, and I got this lovely shade called Ooh. Drag Queen. And I love it what very much. Mean? I thought that this was kind of your jam, actually. It so is. I was like, Except I might make Jenna a pair of socks. <laughs> oh, I would wear socks with pink. Socks yeah. with pink are okay. <laughs> So... This might be a gifty kind of Yay. thing. Yay! So, Love it. Yeah, so that was a really good deal. Like, the difference in my first order versus my second order was $18, and it's a, like a $50 membership. So, yeah. Um, yeah, by the time you throw in the, the free skein of yarn, that's 36 <laughs> Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's uh, that's a real good deal. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I, I made a pretty good haul from there. I also bought a set of, like, um, cable needles because mm-hmm. I keep losing mine. <laughs> I don't use for the, the few times that I use them. The one I'm that I'm doing it. right now, this one um, with the, the kombu ones, the cabling is weird. Um, it's a twisted cable. Oh. And so I actually need like an extra uh, yeah. something for the stitches to hold off because like you take off three, you knit one, then you like bring two back onto the needle and then you hold it in front and it's just too much to like try to keep track of and not drop a stitch yeah so it's a little easier um on that but yeah for basic cables i don't need my cable needles anymore um which is super handy yeah but it also means that i wasn't really looking for the cable needles that i lost and so i needed some more cable needles (laughs) right i know and then it's like and then we're talking about learning crochet too it's like ah man yeah tunisian crochet i'm so excited about it Yeah. yeah like if crochet and knitting had a baby right could be fun yes i'm really excited to learn how to tunisian crochet i literally though just like have like 85 projects that i want to be doing right now yeah well yeah i learned how to candle make yesterday and now my husband is trying to like convince me to be the co-champion or the champion of the candle making section for the maker space oh that would be fun that was fun but like i don't want to learn to make like i don't want to make candles forever (laughs) like that was a fun thing to do but um like, I can't afford to start an entirely new hobby. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's what I was talking about with, um, I went to State Fair last week, and uh, one of the gals that was knitting in the little knitting booth in the sheep barn um, was not a member of the guild, but is planning on joining the guild, and is a weaver. And I was oh, like, fun. I think weaving is so amazing. Like, I love seeing woven projects, yeah. and I kind of wish that I could weave, but by the time you you know, get the, the fiber you need for weaving and the looms and Mm -hmm. the, like, it's so much extra time and so much extra money. You said you've got extra sock weight. I do have extra sock weight, but I don't have a loom. Well, no, but I'm (laughs) sure you could borrow one. That's what we need our libraries to do is just be like, yes. Because you can check out so many other things at the library. Yes, like... we need to have a crafty library. Yeah, that would be it's fun. like, you want to learn to spin? Here, check out a spinning wheel for a week. I think you'd need more than a week. But well, yes. yes. But like, it could be on a, on a two-week, three-week basis or something. And if yeah. you hate it, then you're like, okay, I can return that. No cost. And that's yeah. fine. That would be super fun. That would be awesome. My problem is, library. is I've got so many knitting projects that I want to be doing right now that dividing my brain and trying to learn a different project is like, "Mm, I'll just knit. Yeah, I understand that. I keep looking at my garden too. Like there's a bunch of stuff that I need to get to, but I'm like, well, that'll wait until the kids are in school. Hopefully I potted plants. That was exciting. I potted my dill and my Thai basil. Oh, good. From my, I have an arrow garden that I started a month or so ago. And my Thai basil and my dill is enormous. <laughs> and yeah. my husband did not know that it was a hydroponic garden at first and was like, you should really, like, they should not have to live in those tiny cups for their, their whole lives. Like, your plants should get repotted. Yeah, and I was no, like, they shouldn't. It's actually, tech- it's a hydroponic garden, but I was like, but also, like, I kind of want to plant other things eventually in my arrow garden, so maybe I mm-hmm. should see if I can repot these and design, and they're doing okay. Good. They're still alive. Good, good, good. Which is fantastic. It's, like, healed a little part of me in a way, because I've, for years, for yeah. years, I have said, I kill everything I touch. <laughs> like. plant wise. Nope. Because Titus Plants, is good. relationships. <laughs> Titus is good. 
You can't see anything but his butt. <laughs> He's a very good boy, though. Um, yeah. Haven't killed Titus yet. He came really oh. close a year or so ago, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, that was his own fault, though. That wasn't on me. I saved his life. I didn't kill him. Um, right. <laughs> idiot dog and his opiate addiction. Yeah. So good. Doesn't have an opiate addiction, but someone does, and they left theirs in the park. So, right. Um, and he likes to eat everything. Yes, he puts everything in his face. So that was a hard night. But yeah, I, I feel like for years I've been saying I kill everything I touch. I have a brown thumb, and um, I have kept plants alive for Titus. almost a whole year now, which is very exciting. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, my herbs are just started, but like I've had my easy plant things, so yeah. my money tree is like thriving. I need oh, to repot God. that too because it's getting too big for its little easy plant pot. Um, so I need to repot that into like a 10 or a 12 inch. Um, nice. And I probably like have my... some if you need some. Yeah. Well, I actually ordered one. Oh, good. Um, I was like, it, it's cheap and it's like a self watering one. So I was like, I like oh, that that's idea. so um, smart. Yeah. I've got um, like plastic things, like one's a frog and one's a bird, mm-hmm. that two of my plants that need to be watered more often are mm-hmm. just. Fill that up, and then that way I only have to fill it once a week. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, because that's that's a big part of mine is like I either overwater or underwater. So these easy plants are great because like you just fill up the little chamber and they take what they need from the roots. Like it's, yeah, it's awesome. Um, so I Good. I can't do like any pre-potted stuff because I either overwater or underwater. I killed literally like they would give us at my old school um, in Kansas. The parent teacher committee would give us <gasps> flowers. Twice a year, like they'd give us like a potted, oh, like cute. a little window hangery thing, yeah. and in the fall they gave us like mums or something. Um, yeah. And I killed them within a week every time. That's funny. So I was, I eventually got to the point after like the second year where I was just giving them away to people who didn't kill their plants immediately. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's it's been good. It's been a good like investment in me and to, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, I, I'm I love proud you, of you. So I take care of you. And yeah, that's great. Yeah, I inherited a bunch of plants, and some of them lasted, some didn't. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. And then I planted a bunch of crap in my garden, and now I have to trim it back <laughs> and move things because that's how that goes. Yes, that is part of the process. Yeah, and I, it's fun. I enjoy working in the garden, but mm-hmm. I don't get to do it during summer because, well, summer. Yes, because children and busyness. Yeah, it's funny because, like, everything going on right now, because, like, almost every day there's some knitting happening mm-hmm. somewhere, and people are like, oh, are you going to come? No. No, sure I'm not. I have a bad case of children. Yeah. It's As you've lot. seen by this video, they all show up. They've yeah. all called. At all times. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am... I don't have any of that, but I'm still am not like super social, so I'm like I will do a thing every once in a while. Yeah, I really like the Sunday open knitting and the Friday night open knitting at Cream City. At Cream City, yeah. and I would love to find the space during the day during the week when the kids are in school. Mm-hmm. The one kid, only one, goes back. Yeah. Um, but like ten o'clock to two o'clock is kind of my time during the day. Mm-hmm. But I have to do all the other things. Yeah. And that's not usually when people are meeting. Like, they're usually at, like, I don't know. It's yeah. just different. I think there is one that meets at the library from, like, 10 to 2. Or one of the libraries. Maybe. Yeah. North Shore Library, I think. I think they do Thursdays, oh. like, once a month or something. But I think that was in the evening. Okay. I don't know. One of them is, like, either. a 10 to 2 kind of thing, I think. It's and, fine. Yeah. But it's not the cool <laughs> kids. Yeah, and that's the thing is, like, I've connected with, like, my little knitting group, mm-hmm. and I really like them. And, like, I like to go to the, like, the Cream City ones are nice, but I don't go if I don't know someone who's going to be there. Like, I have such yeah. bad anxiety that it's, like, I need to, like, otherwise I'm just going to sit there silently and be awkward. Yeah, <laughs> um, I kind of have FOMO and want to know everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like we've got such a great knitting community now mm-hmm. that, like, when I say hi... I'm the queen knitter. Like, I really just want to, like, know everybody and connect with all of them. And it's too many. I can't remember. Yeah, that's my issue, too. It's like, I know you, but also, what's your name? Right? Like, (laughs) Like, I remember your face and have no idea who you are. 
Yeah. Uh, welcome to my brain that has names bouncing around in it all the time. I get right. to go back to school in two weeks and actually a little over a week now, I guess. That's, do you do like I always today. did where it's like you remember <laughs> all the kids and then you're like, oh, you're so-and-so's adult. Yeah, no. No? No, because I don't know any other grown-ups really. Okay. Like unless their kid is with them. Gotcha. Then I will recognize them. But I have 500 students. Like, I can't remember right. what all their grown-ups are. Um, well, that, and... that was always my thing. It's like, I would connect adults to the kids that I knew. Mm-hmm. And now I meet adults, and it's like their faces are just like... Eh, I yeah, I just, I have too many. Like, even my kids' names are hard to remember sometimes. Oh, I can't. Where it's like... 500 of them? Yeah, 500 no or more of them. Like, yeah, I always say 500, but it's usually more. Um, and yeah, that's a lot of kid names to remember. It's a lot. And sometimes I mix them up. So oh, yeah. I certainly don't know all of their grown-ups. I, w- <laughs> I would always say, I'm like, I know who you are. I'm sorry. Yep. Like, yep. And they would have no clue, right? Because like, yep. they're like, what do you mean you don't it's know like, who I am? I'm really sorry. I'm kind of the worst. Right. And like, yeah. I. And I then know. someday they'll be adults and they'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Someday they'll understand. I can't remember anything. Yeah. I remind my kids that I have 500 of them and then that helps them like... Like, right. they still, like, they don't get upset that I forget their name, but they're, like, you know, they have, like, the indignant, I'm, yes. <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, I have to remind them sometimes. I'm, like, thank you for reminding me, and thank you for helping me, but remember, I have 500 kids, and it's not because I don't love you, it's because right. I have too many names in my head, <laughs> and sometimes I get them mixed up, so I'm really right. sorry, and, I'm and also thanks for helping me. And music, and <laughs> Yeah, and how to teach, class. and, yeah. There are 72 things happening in my brain at one time. Yes. It's a lot. Same. Same. Yes. And no focus at all. Yeah, that's oh going to... I have to, like, start focusing on shit again. That's going to be a whole thing. <laughs> like, yeah. I, have to, I have to be a grown-up again. I've been on summer vacation mode where I've just been, like, abandoning all responsibility, which has been lovely. Um, right. And now I have to, like, make lesson plans and set up a grade book, and I don't want to... Right. I just want to knit. Somebody hire me to knit full time. That would be fun. Yeah, I'd be down. My arthritis would hurt, but I would be down too. Yeah, I'd, I'd push. I'd push through. <laughs> I know. I just keep saying like I need to stop traveling. I need to stop going places. I need to stop leaving my house. But there are so many yarn stores in Paris. There are. <laughs> and I need to stop being an Uber for my kids. I need my kids to start driving me around. Yes. That I can just knit all day. All yes. day, all day, all day. It's the dream. It is the dream. It doesn't ever happen. <sighs> like, this is the most knitting I've done in a minute. But it's going to be so cute and fuzzy. Yes, I'm excited to see it when it's all finished with the color blocking. I think it'll be so cute. Yeah. I literally, like, I just, I have so many projects and it's like, I just, I want to wave a magic wand and be like, poof, that project is done. Yes. Look what I made. Yes. I think I'm almost ready to start fading into my my little gradient color. Fun. This skirt. I'm so excited. I tried it on yesterday and I got it back on the cable needles and my cable broke. Like from the at the at oh, the point. I hate that. And Michael's like, well you can just super glue it, but it's one of the spinning ones. So oh, I yeah. can't just super glue it because it's supposed to spin. Oh. And I'm very annoyed. So. Is it um a company that, like, you could email them and tell them? Maybe. It's, um, I always get them mixed up. Is it Knitter's Pride or Knit Picks that does the, um, I think it's Knitter's yeah. Pride, um, that's the Mindful Needles. Okay. And I do love them. It's, Knitter, yeah, Knitter's Pride. Um, I do love them, but yeah, I was really upset. I, I would that message I like, them, no. yeah. I've had that happen a bunch. Yeah, I know Xiaogu does that, um, because I've had a bunch of their little, like, mini cables break. Here's your job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You need to email them, mm-hmm. get information, mm-hmm. and then get back to us and let us know if that works. Okay. I can do that. And then that way we can be like, hey. Knitter's Pride is awesome. Yeah. This yes. company stands behind their project and fixed it. Yes. I love that. But yeah, I, I really love the, the 360 like swivel ones. Yeah. I haven't tried them yet. prevent that breakage from happening more often. Because that was my yeah. issue with my Chowgu needles is the miniature ones, especially the cable's so thin. Yeah. That it breaks so easily. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of the Chowgu red lace. Yeah. And again, it's like we all moved away from metal needles. Nope. <laughs> well, but for a long time, right? Right. Like, 
It was all about like it's bamboo, all about bamboo needles. needles for a long time. And now, yeah, it's like I'm moving back. Because with a lot of these different yarns that we're using, mm-hmm. I do love the bamboo with wool, but... Yeah. Well, and I don't mind it for, like, slipperier fibers, too, that, like, mm-hmm. slide really easy. Um, but, yeah, if I, and I prefer wool for my um, metal needles, or metal for my wool, metal needles yes. for my wool, because I feel like wool kind of snags on my wood needles. Okay. And I don't like that feeling where I, like, have to kind of scooch it over. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I really stand behind my metal needles. I'm kind of a stan. Um, but I have a... A set of the Knitter's Pride wooden needles as well that are very nice, but I like it better for slipperier fabrics that need a little bit more stick as you're working with them. Yeah. Um, things like bamboo, yeah, I would not totally. want to use on metal needles because it's so slippery that it, yeah. it like falls off. Um, so yeah. For sure. So All right. Well, my phone is going off again. again. So maybe we'll edit some parts out of this that uh, we paused, or maybe not. And maybe right. we can maybe just we'll see just some jump cuts, and just that's fine. Understand that. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> Welcome to the chaos. We are. We are who we are. Yes. And we I was. Live here. I was going to say that too. It's like we don't. We're not here to sell anything. Nope. Or we, we don't, don't have get paid a to business do this shit. or a. <laughs> yarn shop or anything we just sit here and talk to each other for a while and it's delightful yeah <laughs> it's a way for us to get our brains organized at your expense yes ha-ha. thanks for listening to us yeah if you like it ha huh? <laughs> like it and share it with your friends yeah that'd be great so. all righty have we'll a great week see Keep you later knitting.